Lizzie and the Hackney Death Engine. Based on the British Railway series by Simon Martin and the Ghosts of Vickers Town Yard by David Birch. An original story adaptation by Percy Lovero 6. It was a dark October night at Newton Abbott Station. The chilly winter air and difficult weather patterns hadn't made life easy for the engines. Important munitions trains and supply trains were often delayed, so timetables were hard to stick to. To make matters worse, Hercule was stuck in the works with a failed cylinder, so he wouldn't be back for some time. This meant that Lizzie had to handle most of the freight on her own. The engine sat tight in the sheds that night. A breezy, chilly wind blew over the lines, bringing a thick fog with it. Brrr, it sure is cold tonight, shivered Louise. Mm, it's been like this for a while now. I guess that's what the winter is like for you, sighed Julie. Caitlin and Joe trembled. Being much younger, they were more liable to fall for the spooky atmosphere, which put them both in a state of unease. Lizzie was quick to take advantage of this. Just the right weather for the hackney death engine to run again, she chortled. Lizzie, stop it! Julie saw what was coming. The ha ha hackney what? gulped Joe. Dead death engine? quivered Caitlin. Lizzie smirked triumphantly. Haven't you heard? she asked sweetly. They say that not long ago, a steam engine ran over a signalman while shunting up at Hackney Yards. The engine couldn't move out of shock, and by the time he could, it was too late. The, the, then what? stuttered Joan nervously. What happened to the engine? Lizzie stared down at the ballast, feigning a look of sorrow. Ooh, it wasn't good. By the time daylight rolled around, there wasn't a single trace of the engine left. All there was was a set of twisted frames and wheels. Some say the engine prowls the yards to this day, searching for the tank engine that took its life. The shed was silent, with Julie looking disdainfully at a smirking Lizzie, and Louise, Caitlin and Joe looking frightened. Why would it come after us? stammered Joe. Oh, I don't know, Lizzie smiled innocently. Maybe it's looking for fresh metal to stick itself back to get... Lizzie, stop! Julie snapped. You're behaving like a brat. Maybe that make-believe ghost ought to come after you and knock some sense into that thick smoke box of yours. Lizzie just rolled her eyes. Just then, the shed master appeared and walked up to the engines. Evening all. Lizzie, you have an urgent ammunitions train to take up to London. When you arrive, it will be split in half and another engine will soon be, be there to take it up to Duxford. Caitlin and Joe, since the pair of you still have adequate steam up, please run along in front and shunt it together. Hurry now. The two scuttled shakily away, hoping the death engine wouldn't get them. Julie turned back to Lizzie. Well, I don't know what to say. I really don't. Then don't say anything. You had no right to send Caitlin and Joe into a fright like that, scolded Julie severely. I hope you wind up feeling sorry for yourself somehow. Pah, snorted Lizzie. But she knew that that story was not entirely false. The main shunting yards at Newton Abbott are placed a few hundred yards up the line and are very large in proportion to the station it serves. Hackney Yards, as it was known, is home to many different varieties of carriage or wagon. A single line runs out of the yards and onto a small junction called Aller Junction, which then runs on to different places. Because the station wasn't equipped with floodlights due to the blackout policies, Joe and Caitlin had lamps to shine their way around the yard as they cautiously moved about. Everything seemed very dark, and shadows danced and lurched as carriages and wagons were lit up. It all seemed very big and eerie for the two small engines. Joe was skittish as he moved some wagons over a set of points. 
Because his lamp was shining directly on the truck in front of him, the rest of his surroundings were in total darkness, so he couldn't see where he was going. As he felt his wheels make a left-hand turn, he spotted something. A red eye in the black, staring at him. He screamed in fright, making Caitlin scream from the other side of the yard, which made Joe scream again. Whoa, Joe, easy boy. Caitlin, shush, hold it. The two crews did their best to calm down the two tank engines. J -j -j Joe, are you, you okay? Joe couldn't answer for a while, but when he could, he was rather shaken. Uh, I'm fine. Sorry for screaming like that. What happened? whimpered Caitlin. I was just shunting some trucks over the points when I saw this, this, this red eye come out of nowhere. That wasn't an eye, Joe, soothed the driver. It was just a signal set to danger. Caitlin mumbled to herself. I hope the death engine didn't hear us. What death engine? queried her fireman, who'd obviously overheard. Joe and Caitlin explained about Lizzie's story of the Hackney death engine. Both crews smiled. Joe was skittish as he moved some wagons over a set of points. Because his lamp was shining directly on the truck in front of him, the rest of his surroundings were in total darkness, so he couldn't see where he was going. As he felt his wheels make a left-hand turn, he spotted something. A red eye in the black, staring at him. He screamed in fright, making Caitlin scream from the other side of the yard, which made Joe scream again. Whoa, Joe, easy boy. Caitlin, shush, hold it. The two crews did their best to calm down the two tank engines. J -j -j Joe, are you, you okay? Joe couldn't answer for a while, but when he could, he was rather shaken. Uh, I'm fine. Sorry for screaming like that. What happened? whimpered Caitlin. I was just shunting some trucks over the points when I saw this, this, this red eye come out of nowhere. That wasn't an eye, Joe, soothed the driver. It was just a signal set to danger. Caitlin mumbled to herself. I hope the death engine didn't hear us. What death engine? queried her fireman, who'd obviously overheard. Joe and Caitlin explained about Lizzie's story of the Hackney death engine. Both crews smiled. Lizzie reached Hackney Yard safely, but by this time her mind was out of control, running wild with thoughts about the death engine coming to pay her out, and she seemed to be set on edge by the slightest thing that moved. Not scared, are you? her crew teased. Certainly not, Lizzie scoffed. Why would I be scared? Well, you've been jumpy all the way up here. Alert, driver, I've been alert, not jumpy. But Lizzie desperately wished she felt as brave as she sounded. As she waited for Joe and Caitlin to finish arranging the train, Lizzie sat idling in a siding, staring edgily into the black. As the minutes ticked by, she wished more and more that she could be off and on her way. Suddenly, she saw something that made her breath catch in her throat. A single, white, smoke-box door. It advanced on her with harsh, grating puffs, slowly at first, then faster and faster. Lizzie froze. She wanted to run away, but her brakes were hard on and her wheels were locked with fear. She wanted to cry out, but her mouth had gone dry. The mogul couldn't stop shaking. Finally, the smoke box door, which had taken the shape of a 19th century steam locomotive, came to a halt, almost touching buffers with Lizzie. Lizzie finally found her voice. It had reduced to no more than a mere croak. You. Are, are you the... The engine let off steam, making Lizzie turn pale. So you are real. You really do exist. The spectre was silent. I, I thought you were only make-believe. The engine erupted into a cloud of steam, and when everything cleared, Lizzie saw that the ghost was gone.
she exhaled shakily. Then it happened. The engine charged, its whistle screeching furiously before vanishing right in front of Lizzie. The mogul gave a blood-curdling scream that echoed throughout the yards. Joe and Caitlin jumped when they heard the scream and immediately abandoned the trucks to see if Lizzie was okay. Both saw a terrifying sight. Lizzie stood, wide-eyed, shaking and babbling incoherently whilst her crew did all they could to calm her down. Lizzie! cried Caitlin.